When Norwich City came to Villa Park, they came not only as first division leaders, but with an impressive away record, unbeaten away from home since the previous March. On the other hand, they hadn't won a league game for a month, and Robert Fleck was going through a lean spell without a goal in five games. In contrast, David Platt had just scored four goals in the 6-2 mauling of Ipswich Town in the Littlewoods Cup. But this had followed four consecutive defeats. Was this a turning point? Gate of uh, approaching 20,000, it looks like, here. And Norwich know that if they come unstuck in this one and Arsenal beat Liverpool tomorrow in the live game, then they will be knocked off the top of the table. But can Aston Villa play as they did in the Littlewoods Cup tie? Here's uh, McAnally forcing his way forward and trying a right shot. A brilliant start for Villa and their fans. Alan McAnally, a really powerful figure, much too strong for a group of Norwich City defenders here, getting through and testing Brian Gunn right at the start of the game. So Villa seem to make the uh, early running here, and that's a, a fine tackle, getting uh, Tony Daly away. He's got speed to beat Kelbhouse. Can he get the cross in? Gray coming in on the far post. And Villa really uh, picking the game up here where they left it off during the week in the Littlewoods Cup. Andy Gray coming in fast for the far post cross, just too deep for him. Stuart Gray to Cowens. It's a fine ball. And a brilliant drive by Gage. Fantastic goal by Kevin Gage. 21 minutes gone. Powering through from midfield. Taking the square ball from uh, Andy Gray. And rifling that one in. Didn't look too much danger when uh, Gray turned it square but Gage is coming onto it very fast doesn't dwell on it whacks it straight past Brian Gunn 1-0 to Villa very good little touch Daly against Culverhouse doesn't hang about nobody on the cross though Gage the man of the moment McAnally he should really have done better and Norwich City surprisingly allowing the first division's leading scorer to turn and remain unmarked for a devil of a long time it just rolls to him here rather fortunately but nobody could get at him nimble turn for a big fella perhaps he should have done better here's Andy Townsend running into trouble here with Alan trying a shot that was uh, not powerfully hit but pretty accurate and something to please the traveling Norwich City supporters good move it was a surprise in fact that it came through to Malcolm Allen in the end but he did well to turn and get a shot in but Spink had it covered Dale Gordon with the corner Linigan making the first run up he goes comes to Trevor Putney, shoots and scores! Trevor Putney with a, a welcome equaliser for Norwich City, but how did that bobble around and get out to him in the first place? Couple of rebounds, didn't look too dangerous here, just a stab at it, and Spink surely must have been unsighted, but it's 1-1. Again, the big fellas comfortably winning the challenges in the air, and there's the whistle for the end of the first half, which has been eventful. And from Aston Villa's point of view, for at least 30 minutes, was very, very positive indeed. They looked the better side until Putney picked up that equaliser in the 39th minute. Since then, it's been very even. The game then very much in the balance. Half-time, Aston Villa 1, Norwich City 1. Allen, nice one to Townsend, 
Taken away by Fleck, but he's under such great pressure, and there's good play there. Terrific challenge by Butterworth, but powering play by Villa as McAnally must have a chance, and Gunn holds the ball cleanly, and the referee's given the penalty. Well, Gunn's surprised, and so is Bowen, and I think a few of the watching public are here. But John Martin has given the penalty, although it looked as if McAnally charging through here on a very, very powerful run was quite cleanly stopped by Brian Gamba. Let's have a look at it again. He got the ball. Did he make contact with a player before? It didn't look as if he did. But the penalty it is, nevertheless. And although Brian Gunn makes his point and the referee's pencil point is busy, and the yellow card he gets, it won't make any difference because the penalty will now be taken by David Platt. Well, that's very, very controversial. Not the first controversial penalty Norwich City have been involved in is Platt. And a great save by Gunn. A tremendous save by Brian Gunn. And I wonder there if justice was done. It wasn't a particularly good penalty, it should be said, by uh, David Platt. Not very powerfully hit, but Gunn did a very, very good job indeed. Alan does well. He's probably the smallest player on the field, but to win it in the air is a mark of uh, some distinction. But it's Villa coming forward well now. Tony Daly. Easy one for Phelan. Fleck can't control it. Forward by Gray. Nice bit of control by Platt. Who can he find? Nobody but Putney. Putney should uh, have cleared that one. He's got himself into trouble and his side into trouble. And here's Platt. 2-1 to Aston Villa, nice goal by David Platt, but trouble there by Putney, puts Gray in possession, he doesn't muck about, it's a good cross from that situation to get it so deep, and Platt on the far post does the perfect thing, 2-1. Away record looking very much in jeopardy here at the moment. Townsend forward for Phelan making a good run. He's worked hard in midfield. Now he's starting to get forward more. Cowens. Nice ball and beautifully relayed into the path of Andy Gray. Up against Mark Bowen again. Gray can get one in. And very close to number three as David Platt came in on the near post. Good simple move there by Villa from the moment that uh, Cowens relayed that ball forward. Gray showing a lot of speed and aggression on that right-hand side. Platt, well marked by Linegan. So another corner for Villa, the big fellas up there once again, of course. Certainly well ahead on corners here. And he comes out to Kevin Gage and he scores. Kevin Gage makes it 3-1 to Villa and his second of the game. Well, again, the goalkeeper couldn't have seen this one cleanly, but Gage coming in from a distance, hits it very well. Gunn gets a hand to it, but it's into the back of the net and Norwich City's away record looks in tatters. Forward goes Townsend. Allen. And a chance here for Putney. Good save by Nigel Spink, but really, from that angle and that distance, Trevor Putney might have put that one away. Unselfish play by Malcolm Allen. That's a really good opening for Trevor Putney. And a good save by Spink. well won by Villa in defence and they push up squeeze up on the Norwich midfield players 
but not perhaps tight enough on Townsend. Deflected away and Spink does superbly with Keown clearing his lines. That was a difficult one for Nigel Spink. Townsend shot was deflected by a defender and Spink had to react very fast indeed. Butterworth wins that one, but really that's the final battle because that's the final whistle. Norwich City have suffered their first defeat away from home. The honours here certainly have gone to Aston Villa and Graham Taylor's side. Two goals from Kevin Gage, one from Platt, with uh, Trevor Putney replying for Norwich City. But Aston Villa here quite clearly have picked up the impetus of their win in the Littlewoods Cup tie against uh, Ipswich Town and carried it on against the First Division leaders. A good performance. Norwich have played better and got points, but not on this occasion. The final score, Aston Villa 3, Norwich City 1.